about uh, looking ahead to Open Zulu 11.0, which is the distribution that is currently in development. Um, the last part then happened um, very early in the development process of 10.3, which was released in September. This time we will release in June, so we are much further ahead in the development process of Open Zulu 11. Oh, oh, sorry, do I have to stay? Okay, that's fine. Um, so the, my, the content of my talk will be shortly introducing the distribution to those that don't know it, which is basically the same as last year. Um, <coughs> I will shortly list the new features and will give some room for your feedback and discussions uh, on what we improve, can we improve, because we're still roughly two months before beta 1, so there's still room for your input. Okay, so let's start with the distribution introduction. Um, what makes the distribution a distribution? Um, the toughest part really is picking from all these great open source um, software that is. We have in our factory tree, I just checked, roughly 10,000 packages, which is uh, RPMs in our case. Um, we can only put around 800 on a CD. Of course, one of them is open office, but um, it's still less than a percentage of packages that are on the CD. The DVD has roughly 2,000, but still quite some that you can put. And on the build service, we have 30,000 packages. So, I mean, OpenSUSE is really huge, and if you get a promo DVD outside, you will get only a so tiny portion of it, but you get the portion, portion that most people will, con uh, will connect to OpenSUSE. So, of course, specific developments that we are doing for OpenSUSE are making up the distributions, like we have YAST, which is still very unique, even though it's open source and some distributions use it. Uh, we have Zip, which is our software, uh, software update stack. We have, of course, we have uh, developments in the base system. Our distributions name their booting and give them top level domains. We just do it and are booting faster than them, but we don't have top level domains for them. Um, and the community itself makes our distribution. So um, we're getting factory trees out there that are tested from the community and we have alphas and betas that are tested and that are contributed to from the community. So the most important of these is the factory tree, which is our leading edge development. We are thinking it out roughly every two days, which is after every rebuild we push out the tree. Um, the goal, the definite goal is that it's stable and I'm actually running this plantation from the factory installation. Um, but, of course, with, as with almost every um, open source project, when you get the beating edge, it's always interesting uh, at times. Um, there's a mailing list specific to those that are using and are discussing it, which is also the main development discussion platform, basically. If you want to contribute to OpenSUSE and to the next version of it, OpenSUSE Factory at OpenSUSE.org is your goal. Hmm. Ah. So, um, what's also very important for OpenSUSE is the build service. The, with 10.3, we integrated the repositories there as integral part of the distribution. So we have a module um, that lists the popular repositories and you can with one click select latest Firefox, latest OpenOffice, latest uh, Wi-Fi drivers, latest KDE, latest GNOME stable, latest games, I don't know. Um, and they will be even more visible with 11.0. Um, as they are more integrated into the, to the registration workflow then. And we put more and more packages um, 
into the build service and maintaining them in the build service and are only copying, copying them back to the distribution. As before, we very often just copy it into the build service and build it there even though it wasn't maintained then. So, but the top priority for this year is uh, creating a better infrastructure so that everyone can contribute to OpenSUSE and every part of OpenSUSE. Right now it's very easy to contribute to the KDE community, to GNOME Stable, uh, to Compass, etc. But the base system is still set apart from it. I guess not too many people are really interesting, interested in hacking our compiler, uh, but it should be possible, and that's basically our top priority goal. Uh, but there are several talks about how to how the build service improve, build improve. Um, and what we did over, since last Postam is we have the online updates available to testing heroes. So in the past we had the problem that we released online updates that weren't tested well enough because we can't test on all setups and all um, hardware. So we are re releasing them as soon as we build them, unless there are security uh, updates and are under embargo. Um, so if we have a new kernel that fixes some known problem, we put it out there and leave it there the week for heroes to test and if no one had a problem with it, we release it to the common public. As Martin just said, we have roughly one million installations, so one broken kernel update is really a problem. So, hmm. Shoot. Is things new? Okay. Um, these are basically the new versions that are coming out from OpenSUSE, uh, sorry, from open source uh, projects that will be in OpenSUSE 11.0. Most of them are already like kernel 2.6. 24, OpenOffice 24 is in beta right now, K4 is also in beta, um, GNOME 22 is beta 2, I think. Yeah, beta 2 or 3 now. Uh, Firefox 3 is going to be beta, GIMP 24 is already in, GCC 4.3 is released, candidate, etc. So, So this time we will really do it as prime medium, 
the Alpha the Alpha 2 already is released as live CD at the same time as the normal CD and DVD. And if still no one cares about live CDs because I bought it, I don't know. Um, and this is basically what makes up most of my of the rest of the talk is we are working still on simplifying the installation. Um, so I guess it's sleeping all the time. Um, so the installation improvement started already as plans uh, with last custom or were presented as plans for last custom. So the goal then was to have one CD so that you don't have to download five CDs or a DVD just to install a basic desktop. So we created a GNOME CD and a KDE CD for both 20, 32 and 64 bits. And this was English only, but during installation you could register network if you had a cable and DHCP and then you could download from our factory tree the remaining packages. And it wasn't not it was used as but it wasn't appreciated as much as we hoped. So we, we thought that the DVD is left aside, that everyone just downloads six hundred or seven hundred and then downloads the remaining 300 megabytes of software he needs beyond the um, basic desktop. But our registration number shows that still DVD is a clear winner. So I looked basically, or we looked at what the reviewers out there, the journalists, said about the installation. And they were highly confused that the installation is still so complex and offers so much. And um, that you have download and it can register network, but not Wi-Fi or not that driver, and it was very confusing to them. And so my idea when I took over the development of 11.0 was to go one step back and think: Why do we need a CD? And can we make it better? Can we simplify it even more, or can we do it completely different? And So, um, I will present shortly the installation of CAN3 because I assume that even though even those that know OpenSUSE don't install it every two days. And, uh, <laughs> um, so, I will briefly uh, guide you to the old installation, or our stable installation. Um, so, it starts with picking a language. I hope this can be. Okay, then you get a media check, then you have to agree to the license. You pick if you want to install or update. You pick the online repos I talked about. You pick a time zone. You pick your GNOME desktop XFCE or a server. That, uh, then you get a proposal, which includes the partitioning and the software selection. Then you can change your keyboard to a different language and your. Uh, user interface language, then you confirm, after that you have to wait quite some time during that the package are installed. After that you enter the root password, you give your host name, you have to approve the network config, you test the network config, you download the release notes, you register, you create users, here's even a mask missing, um, then you see the release notes, then you approve the hardware configuration, then you get a congratulation, and then you're done. So, we sat together in Prague, October 2007, and said, this is just too much. And um, we had a huge list, I mean, you can't read this, but it was full of action items and things that the developers of Yast wanted to change. So the, set, so the action items that went out of the workshop for the, for the team was basically making it faster, making it sexier, making it simpler. Easy like that, easy as that. So, ah, okay. something had to be done about 
our installation. <coughs> we want to concentrate on the workflow of the installation and, and the look and feel. I could have shown you nine one screenshots and they would have looked roughly the same, which is good for consistency reasons, but which is bad for boring reasons. Or I, I mean, it's like four years and the the web doesn't look like like four years ago either. So like uh, unless unlike Google. Um, so we want think that simple things like put more icons for easier parsing what is happening. We want uh, simplified the progress bars, no longer, no, not so many pop-ups. Um, we, we want to split better between when you install and when you administrate a system. Like, do you have to configure a printer in your installation or is this, isn't this an administration task that you are doing uh, when you buy a printer also? Or is after installation work really static? So, uh, we try to combine steps of these 20, so you need less clicks for the same result. And we try to pimp up the installer. Uh, there were several mock-ups and uh, pictures. So, okay, this pimp up my installer was, was in the wiki page where community members uh, collected ideas and mock-ups for the, for the installer and it was basically a nickname for starting theming of Yast and throwing everything out uh, of, of the old style and do all of QT style sheets. And so this is now the current factory installation. You will see some flaws in the screenshot if you look very closely, but uh, it's really work in progress, but you see at the first screen you can pick language, keyword layout and license and okay. then you get icons in the in this mode, in the in the screen that is, is happening between the system analysts you also get uh, icons, icons that show the progress and then you Collect, um, select your time zone, um, you can zoom into that map, and then you pick your desktop or your installation, the system type. We, we um, added a server selection, which gives you just a text prompt without X, or you get a minimal X where you can only run TWM, or I'm not sure. Uh, XFCE was data, we can discuss this after the talk. Um, on board Roman KDE has in both previous versions. And then, okay, then I added one step, which is the partitioning, so that, um, that you can see in, during the installation that we will erase a partition and create another one. And you can switch, I mean, this. This radio button is highlighted, it's just not visible in the theme. But you can switch between these radio buttons and switch to LVM so you can um, create volumes or that you create a proposal based on volumes uh, right in that dialog. Or you go right into the extra partitioning mode where you can change mount points or add your slash user from a different partition or whatever you like. Or you can have a complete uh, workflow where you can do everything. So, but it, yeah. so then, that's the move. Uh, you create a new user account and you have this option to use the password for the root password. Because I talk to many people and they all use on their laptop the same password for root and the user, and it's one click less. <laughs> so, so you don't need the root prompt, uh, root mask that after that, unless if you unclick this option, then of course you get prompted for the root password. So, then you get a 
summary, there uh, shouldn't be any need to change anything in here because everything you changed uh, your, that I think people will change were already asked for and if you accept here your, you have to approve it once again this dialogue is I would claim um, intendedly unthemed um, and if you say install there you will have to wait a bit and after that you are here so the other steps and these are quite some uh, will be removed uh, they will not be removed they will run non-interactively so we will continue detecting your graphic card we will configure it for the default settings we will continue detecting your printer and configure it if, it, if we have a driver for it we will continue setting a host name even though it's a random one based on your Mac number and um, but the other okay, I should uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. so there are several steps that we can't do non-interactively that most of them require network support so the installation will create a desktop that is comparable to a live CD or live CD installation just that you have your own user, your own partitioning, your own software selection and if you go into your normal desktop online like with network manager configure your Wi-Fi and be online you can be prompted to register the, on the update repositories do the update and I talk about registering the community repositories and download additional software like I want Tech Life, I want the latest games, uh, what's the name, Battle of War? That's hmm? not, that's not, sorry. Um, <coughs> but several administration tasks are no longer part of the installation then. So that includes opening the SSH port, um, configuring remote printers, set custom hostname, um, and these are basically those, these are the features we, are, we will lose for reducing from 20 to 5 dialogues during the installation. So I hope, and this is basically what I want to discuss in the rest of these of the minutes, there are still 20. Um, if this is okay with everyone or if there are suggestions how to solve these problems. So, Is the system that launches the installer the live CD itself or is it still different? Um, currently with Alpha 2 you will have a DVD, uh, one CD with only the software for KDE for, for, um, or GNOME desktop and we have a live CD which, is, which has a live installer which will have roughly the same or comparable workflow but no full screen for example but the, if we stick with a one CD installation or installable CD is not yet clear it will basically depend on the feedback we get during the beta phase so the question then is why don't you just use the live CD and the installer there it has already detected the screen and the printers and everything and just use those settings that you already have from the live yeah. running system and use these to configure the system why do you still use two separate installer systems? Because we want to have a DVD. Couldn't you use the same live system for the DVD plus some additional packages? The live, the live system has a very big disadvantage. It needs quite some memory. And um, the, the install from a live system is much faster. But this is something that you want to change as well. Because we want from, for the CDs or uh, perhaps also for the DVDs we want to install the base system from an image and then only install hardware specific and language specific things by RPM so we so the, the difference will be quite slow, uh, low and I guess for 11.0 we will offer both 
at least this is my current strategy, and then see, see for the future what has been used really. Okay. I have two questions. The uh, first one is how do I set up a bootloader if I choose not uh, to get a bootloader or if I want to be sure that my Windows is still uh, on the hard drive? <laughs> um, <laughs> so basically you have to scroll here, there's a scroll bar, and after that, in there here somewhere is the bootloader configuration you will create, and in there you can configure. All these links are creating dialogues where you can change, I mean you can change the processor, and you, but you can change partitioning still in here, and further below is it's pretty much hidden, I think. Sorry? It's pretty much hidden. It's pretty much hidden, but the Google is really not uh, what you should change. I mean... But wouldn't it be better if people see um, visually that their Windows is still on their hard drive? Yeah, but it's independent of the bootloader. I mean... Yeah, but just, just to give uh, feedback. I think uh, we have contact with people who write us mails and... Uh, who well, always tell us, I don't know, I'm not sure if my Windows is uh, marked mm. away from my yes. hard drive. Actually, there's a very big problem we face with these uh, device names. The expert wants to see what device names he has, um, but, the, but the average user only knows the f C or D. Um, but there's no good solution that we, that we came up with, so if there are suggestions for that, um, so the bootloader would basically only list we would you would be able to boot Windows, at least we would try to. Okay. And the second question is uh, what happens when I click on a media player and I don't have a uh, sufficient codec? Yes. Is that, do I uh, can I include a panel repository or whatever uh, automatically by clicking one button or now the, uh, I talked about uh, you're doing online update mm -hmm. and after that we will give you the list of, of community repositories which consists of build service repositories and a catalog that we pull from opensourcecommunity.org and they kindly include Pacman in there. So you can uh, register Pacman with a click and then... Um, so it's automatically possible we won't, by, by the configuration process? I wouldn't call it automatic but uh, it's just one click. Okay. So we, we wouldn't, we wouldn't, I'm not sure if our legal department would be too fond if we install automatically. No, no, uh, I don't talk about installing it, but the user can choose it and yes. they present it, uh, yeah. the possibility to do it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Not, but not during installation, but after, okay. in the desktop. Yeah. Right. Um, let me. From that side. I see quite a lot of space on the right side of the screen, so why do I have to scroll down for the rest of the list? Why not? It, it, it should fit all. Yeah, two columns. Yeah, why not two columns? And, uh, and, and have one and overview at once. That much space, you mean? Yeah, well. Uh, <laughs> oops, sorry. I, uh, now it looks like there. How much is there below it? Do we see most of it now? 60%. 60%. So the, the other 40% should, should fit on the page. Uh, in a second column. What, you, what you see here is system where there is no uh, information with it, yet with partitioning you see some information. And with uh, software, yeah, yeah, okay. But with software you see a lot, which most people probably yeah. do not either know what it is, or if they want to know it, they can click on it. Okay. So if you take these details, if you take them out, in yeah. just a small explanation, you have everything on, on one screen already. Actually, the idea we discussed was to have the flag. These are all patterns, um, yes. if you know. Um, we discussed to have a flag in them if they are important or if they just they are. Because, for example, we have X-Window system, which is required by KDE. There's no way that you can have KDE without X window system. The same for base system. So it could be that we only list here the top uh, patterns and then this reduces. And to, to, to answer your point, this is 800, 600. Um, unless you install on an EPC, you will have more space and then you will see more information on that. So 
I think the partitioning is really the most important because this is really the only thing where you can destroy something uh, in trying on this user. So this will stay for the system is there just to it. Um, and only just the processor which is not too not easy to configure. You can then, uh, for example, put the system much lower because mo most yeah, people know what... Uh, this... Forget about it. <laughs> that's just... <laughs> Slideshow. Yes, yeah, so on the first uh, tab you have the slideshow with the presentation of OpenSUSE. On the second you have the uh, installation uh, about uh, what is being installed. On the third I think you have the, the, the three tabs I think. The third is the not sure. So you could add a tab there and give the information about the system there. Or XFC or something? 
That's all I want to configure the software. I don't even want to see the patterns on Yeah, that's what I'm up to. Yeah. But so um, he disagrees. So I would like to have a broader than one um, worth one. So who does media check? How do you have proper way to see? Yeah, that's what I thought. And it was very hard to find out who actually wanted to have this in the installation workflow. Um, so, who does not approve the license? <laughs> um, so, okay, this is new installation, you have to do it. Um, <laughs> you didn't? Yeah, it's awful. Um, but here, I don't care either. Um, question, Kulo, about the repositories. Um, other distribution distributions. Other distributions use an approach where they define uh, online repositories at the very beginning of the installation process and they install on, um, software from online repositories during the main package installation. You can do that. You can just download a mini ISO, which is 40 giga megabytes, and install from FTP. And you get. You can't add Pac Man at that point stage, though, because that's been deferred. Yes, which is. So what was the, very my question is, what, were the, what was the decision? Why not to do it that way with the online selection at the front and then one installation, but to split it? The reason was that we wanted a, to make it very easy for people to register such, such, such uh, repositories, but at the same time, we don't want to risk that people by installing something and you don't even know that they changed. Because you click on, yeah, I want Pac-Man, but then you get a completely different Amarok. And then you report the problem, and you said, no, I didn't change Amarok. And this is why we wanted to make this a complete, specific action to change your Amarok to the Pac-Man version. So that's political or just the decision for, for supportability. Specific observation, we should make it very easy to find the steps to add the community repository afterwards. I said that twice already. So, who does not change the default? Um, okay. So, this is basically an interesting screen I want to add. Um, the default is overview, and in there you don't have system before someone mentions it. Um, who, for example, changes the keyboard layout to not have the default associated to the language. Uh, or, uh, almost half the You mean when you already selected anyways? If you have German, and it will pick Germany, German keyboard layout. But then many often, and I think I, mean, I saw some German heads here, want to see English in screen instead of a German keyboard in front of them. The other way around. Or the other way around. Um, when I thought in your new installer you had both anyways. Yes, but first it's language, and if you change language to German, it will change the combo box for the keyboard as well. And then the new installation... But you should be able to change it there, you don't need the summary there. No, no. That's, it will be there as a summary, but it won't be there to change it. Yeah. Um, so who changed 3 the partitioning in here? <laughs> and that's the reason why we added it. Okay, no discussion needed anymore. Um, so who, who's going into the software selection at this point? Uh, I see. Um, and, and now the question is for what reasons? Uh, because, well, for me, because I want to add uh, several programs and I want to remove several programs. For example, I use uh, Window Maker, not KDE or GNOME, so I install Window Maker. I don't uh, want to have, have up armor, so I deinstall that. And some other things I want my specific way. And get it over with once and for all. Sorry? And get it over with once and for all. No, no, no. But you could just install. So the goal for it is to have the base system, which base, I mean, basic desktop, um, as one image in a very short time because it's not no longer running any config and not uh, opening the RPM database all the time. And then you can, after the installation, remove up armor or install. Um, For me, the installation right? means that I can start with a system and not start configuring it. That's what I had to do with uh, during the installation. Hmm. What's the difference between doing it during installation and after? Uh, it's the same amount of time. What's the yes, it's mindset. So, 
Okay. When, when, I, gas, when I see the screen coming up, auto gas too. I uh, want oh, yes. to be running already. Yeah. Would it be but the number of users who have actually tweaked the software installed is probably much smaller than the number of users we want to reach who will get very confused by all these packages. Uh, the computer will all be, yes. So wouldn't it be better to have, if you're going to spend the same amount of time, to do it after the install rather than before, so people who are not uh, power users like yourself, who, so they just basically do it uh, I don't want to force them, of course, to do it, but I want to have the option myself to do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So that's what, why shouldn't I be doing it at that moment? The, uh, the standard user, the, the non-power user, doesn't bother with it before or after either way. Uh, I wouldn't be sure about that. I mean, the, the basic desktop is really the basic desktop, and there are. I mean, the average open user user uh, does care. Even my wife says, why is there car lines not installed? And the first thing is installing car lines, which is a KDE game, for those who don't know. And those should fix that, not knowing. Um, <laughs> uh, but what I, what I want to ask you, even though, even if this were, if the entity wasn't there to change other than the five option I listed for desktop or system. Would this be a huge problem or just a minor annoyance for you? I would start wondering why I should install things that I don't want. No, no, there's one option, minimal X, which would be for you because you want minimal X plus window maker minus up armor. So yes, you would have to install up armor to remove it afterwards. Yes, and I would wonder why should I install things. Because the installation would be fast as uh, twice as fast. And I personally think that's not really not, uh, for me this is more important than the speed. Okay. But, uh, but still, big problem or minor annoyance? Uh, it's a uh, big annoyance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Will there be a, a detailed installation option for people who love 20 clicks? Sunday no. afternoon. No, not impossible. They can create an after hour uh, auto yes profile with an, with their favorite XML editor and then run. That's for the profit then. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like uh, the man behind me here wants a choice really early on. Do I want a basic installation or an expert installation? Nice. Well, I have oh, the only option that I removed are those that I listed, open SSH, uh, configure the details of X, etc. So I won't, and I hope most agree, won't add in, I'm an expert here because there's never, someone who's not going to click it. Now, question about compatibility, I always install with uh, outer Yoast. Is the XML file still compatible with uh, in 11.0, uh, or do I have to uh, re-edit all my XML files? Um. Because from uh, 10.2 to 10.3, with the introduction of uh, threads, it was a uh, major uh, effort re-editing all the XML files. With threads, sir? With uh, the introduction of threads during the installation. Uh. Because in 10.1, didn't have threads, you have uh, software uh, selections. Uh, yes. That's me. Yes. That's about selections. Yes. Yeah, no, the, the, we changed it once with 10.1 uh, and we're still using patterns. Uh, and the Autoyas uh, developers are really fond of uh, testing old profiles with new factory solutions. So it should, unless, unless uh, if not, we will most likely provide a tool to change that. For patterns and selections, they were not too much, but slightly different, so it wasn't that much. And it wasn't on our agenda that, that high. Auto yes, it became really much more popular after that. Okay. Do you Last all, question, sir. Do you already know which version of KDE you will ship? Um, 359 will ship for sure. 359 for sure. And uh, what about KDE 4.1? 4. 4. 0. Point something? Yeah. 
you don't know yet. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> We're giving you a team council about it at 9.30 a.m. tomorrow morning. That's okay. Bring your coffee, dude. <laughs> okay. Thank you, everyone, for the fruitful discussion. And happy using.